HTML is often used synonymous, synonymous with uh, Qt Quick, but uh, Qt Quick is just one application of QML. I'm going to shoot at. So um, Qt, uh, Qt Quick, uh, Qt, uh, QML is actually the declarative language, and Qt has an engine for parsing and you know, processing it. Um, what we actually have is we have an import that tells us what kind of modules we, we, we use. Then the blue items, the blue stuff, those are elements. Elements is anything that is a Q object based subclass. Doesn't have to be a declarative item or a Q quick item. Um, we have also have um, like identifiers, and we can use those identifiers together with properties to create so called property bindings, right? So we can make um, the property of one element depend on the value of a property of another. So this is the this is the base technology, right? So Qt Quick, this is a uh, the example is for Qt Quick just uses that to do UI, right? Um, what other use cases do we have? Like BlackBerry 10 Cascades. This is a this is a Qt4 implementation. It's it's totally different in the, the it does its own rendering, but it's mo uh, a lot like Qt Quick 2. Um, looks very similar, right? So we have an import, different import, different object system, different import, but we have the same structure, right? We have elements, we have properties, we can identify elements, we can bind properties together, right? First, first um, widely widely used application of QML outside of Qt Quick BB10 Cascades. The next thing, declarative widgets. So the idea is, right, we can instantiate anything that is a Q object, which means Q widgets are Q objects, right? So why not use QML to create a Q widget tree, right? That looks like this, right? We import Q widgets. Um, well, we have a widget, right? Inside that, we have children, right? We can have layouts in there as well, but always the same syntax, right? We have the import, we have the elements, we have nested elements, we have identifiers, we bind properties. There is a talk, um, me and uh, my colleague Tobias Koenig have a talk about that tomorrow um, at three o'clock in the room Moscow, okay? If you're interested in the details. Um, so the next thing is, what, that's what all examples for UI, right? What if you do something that's non-UI, right? Like declarative CMake. So this is one, uh, one thing, a prototype that my friend and colleague Stephen Kelly wrote. It's basically, the idea is you use a declarative language, QML, to describe a build system, right? So we have, again, the import, we have, again, elements. We have elements that refer to each other that bind properties, okay? Another application, non-UI. Okay, um, one thing that's also used by Qt Creator, for example, are QML project files. QML project files are QML files themselves. They look like this, right? Again, we have the very common import, right? We always start the QML file with import, and this import then defines what, what the objects or the, the elements are actually you know, referring to. So here we have a project, right? The project has a property main file. So we have sub-projects like QML files, image files, and so on. Another application of QML. There is uh, the, it started, I think it started Nokia, they're writing a new build system called Cubes, right? It also uses the same syntax, but it's using its own engine. So that's why it's not, not on my slides, right? It's not an application of the Qt declarative engine or the QQML engine in Qt5. Right, there is also a QML presentation system that's built on QML and that's used for presentations, right? So, well, you import, in this case, Qt Quick, but you have different kind of items, right? So, um, presentation, slide, you can have animations on that, you know, between slides and so on. QML presentation system. Again, well, this is kind of like an, um, well, it has called QML many faces, right? This is an, uh, one of the sub faces of Qt Quick. Um, you can also use that to create domain specific languages, right? Let's say you have in well, sim very similar to the to the um, build system, you have a packaging system, right? You can have like you know package. This is a file. This is an asset, and so on. Make the packaging program export certain properties that you can then use. Okay, um, package this for for Windows. Package this for Mac. Package this for Linux, and so on. Or package this for the embedded platform. Or you could create um, things like um, uh, describing an email, right? An email is also a tree structure. You have a header, you have like body, you can have multi parts and so on. That's all, all doable with QML. Really nice, in a really nice syntax, machine and human readable. Okay, so the summary is, right? QML is not just good quick. It can, it's not just UI. It's uh, a declarative language and an engine to process it. 
um, you can create any Q object based class with that engine, right? Any element and the elements can be any Q object. They just have to be available in a component set. So you can create your own custom component sets. The engine builds a tree of objects and automatically evaluates and reevaluates property bindings, right? Um, so you can, it automatically evaluates dependency chains of those properties. Um, Properties are random, updated, and your application, your core application, your C++ core, can export properties, can change properties, and the QML scene will automatically um, update those. So you can always, of course, then access things from the from the object tree. Okay, thank you. That's it. <laughs>